Hi everyone, it's Krista and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not new, hello again. So this is my channel and today I am bringing to you all kinds of my summer DIYs that I've done. So it's a, it's a bunch of videos that I put together and they're going to be out of order. They're not going to be in order. So I hope that you'll watch through to the end. So sit back, have a cup of coffee and enjoy the videos and I hope you guys like it. So my channel, I do DIYs on a budget, Dollar Tree DIYs, thrift flips, farmhouse and rustic, reeds, and seasonal decor. So if you like what you see here, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up, give me a comment, and also subscribe. I also do Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, and Facebook. And most of these that you see, most of these videos you're going to see, I actually sell the craft kits in my Etsy shop. I also sell the ones that are already done. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks. First DIY, I'm going to take some of these picks that I had in my stash. And I've got these little lemons that I'm going to be using as well. I'm also going to be using some ribbon to make a bow. And I'm going to be using some paints in different colors. And then some of this paper vinyl from the Dollar Tree. And that sign right there I made on my laser. So this is gonna go to my craft show if it doesn't sell it will be in my Etsy shop which is down below in the description box so first thing I did is I taped down the center and I did it with the maize color by Waverly chalk paint that's the yellow and then I did black on top and then I'm gonna leave a space and I'm gonna move down just a little bit like just about the width of the tape. That's why I put a little piece there first and I taped that off. And then I'm gonna make two white stripes. So I'm gonna do one there and then one underneath. And then I'm gonna take the vinyl and I traced out the bottom portion of the circle and I'm going to place that down after I cut it out with the Buffalo check vinyl. And then of course, I'm gonna sand the edges to make sure it's all nice and cleaned off and those little pieces come off if it's hanging over. Next, this is a um, another piece that goes on the thing. Now, a lot of my footage went by. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it, so I apologize. But you could see that I did the lemons and I did the green for the leaves and now I'm gonna glue everything down. And I also made this really pretty bow with some of the ribbon that I had. So I apologize, I don't know what happened. I thought it was recording and it probably wasn't. But it does say sweet summertime. And if you guys are interested, you can private message me and I will uh, make one for you if you'd like, cause these are going to be for sale in my um, Etsy shop, like I said, and that link is down below in my description box. And then I'm taking the greenery and I'm just going to glue it on both ends of my bow just to make it look super extra pretty. And I love lemons in the summertime, you guys. Lem lemons and bees are just my favorite. And then I'm gonna take these lemons that I got off of another pick and I'm just going to glue those down into the greenery. And then of course I put a hanger on it and there it is, you guys. I think it turned out super cute. What do you guys think? Um, I did have these little flowers that were cut out that also come with it and I glued those on there as well. And then I made this little um, hanger with some buffalo checked um, beads and some yellow and white ones. And then I just tied them in a knot on each end so they don't come off and then I stapled them to the back of my sign. And there it is. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the description, I mean the comments. So now I'm gonna take another one that I cut out of my um, laser cutter and I'm gonna have this one available as well in my Etsy shop. And the first thing I'm gonna do with this one, I'm gonna stain the circle first. So now my wood rounds I get at um, they're either Dollar Tree and I like glue two of them together to make them more durable or I used um, the rounds from Hobby Lobby that are a little bit bigger because you can't get these big ones at the um, Dollar Tree. So, And I stained it and then I wiped it, of course, with the antique wax. Now I'm going to make the pot look like it's galvanized. So I'm using Steel Paint by Waverly and also Elephant Gray. And I'm just using a sponge and I'm just dabbing it on. 
And I just keep going back and forth with those two colors till I get it the way I want it to look. And there it is. And I think it looks like metal. I like it. And then I did the um, leaves green, the lemons yellow, of course, with the same color. I used goldenrod, actually, for this one. Um, it was a goldenrod yellow color. And now these pieces are the pieces that come with it. So what it's going to do is you're going to glue these two pieces together first. And then you see the leaves there on the right-hand side. That little long piece is going to go and it's going to slide right in there. Now these are interchangeable, but I used it to stay permanent. But I can make it interchangeable if I want to. And I could change it up for the different seasons. With this typical file that I got on Etsy. And then it has a little uh, ribbon that goes on here as well. So I did that in white. And now I'm going to glue down this long piece in the center. And you'll see it just fits right in. And I'm using wood glue, uh, super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree and also hot glue. And I swear by that glue from the Dollar Tree. It works awesome. And then we're going to start putting our little lemon slices on here. So I'm just going to glue this one goes right up against the pail looking like it's coming out. So it's going to look like you're dumping the pail and the lemons are just falling out. And I think it's adorable. I absolutely love this cut file. I think it's just amazing. And it's so pretty. And this one, I'm actually going to make one for my front door because I liked it so much. I want to make one for myself. So yeah. And then I just glued them down. And I used, like I said, the wood glue and also hot glue. And then I glued down everything. So there it is, all nice. And then it has a little sign that says hi. I made another bow and I stuck that down there at the end of the pail there. And now I'm gonna take a little bit of these green picks again that I had. I actually took these off of a wreath that I had <laughs> and I'm gonna stick those in there. And then this little flower that I think I got this flower at the Dollar Tree, actually. But it's really pretty. It goes really well with the everything. And there it is, you guys. I think this turned out so cute, too. I love it. Let me know what you guys think down below. But I really like the way this one looks, too. I think it's so pretty. So now DIY number three. So now this one is another one. <laughs> For your front door and this one is bees and lemons so what I'm gonna do is it says hello spring and basically it's the same paints I'm using so now this time I use a darker green hunter green but this time I'm going to paint the um, round with black ink paint by Waverly we're gonna do this one with black and white it's a little bit different and then the hello I'm gonna do in black and the spring is going to be in black as well and this is another one that I cut out on my laser. So if you guys want it, message me and I can make one for you or I can give you the kit too. So I'm selling the kit or I'm selling it already made. And then I just did the little flowers in yellow and then I did the little leaves green in that hunter green color. And yes, then some of the flowers I did in white and the little tiny ones I did in yellow because they're going to glue. I'm going to glue the tiny ones on top of the um, white ones and vice versa. So then there's this. This is another round piece that has the scallop edges. And it also has the little bee trail that you see there that gets engraved on the wood. And I'm just going to um, paint this white. And then I'm going to see, make sure my placement is good because I made it a little bit smaller than the round so that it fits on there perfectly and it looks really good. And then what I wanted to do is I wanted the um, that part, that white part to come out a little bit more and I wanted it to look more like shiplap. So what I did is I took my dark antiquing wax, dark wax, not antiquing, sorry, and I just rub that on with some with my little uh, stencil brush, and then I rub my fingers along the edges. Now, if you get too much of this stuff, it rubs right off with a baby wipe, you guys. It'll rub it right in, and it just looks so cool. So I use this a lot on my projects. And if you come to my lives on Friday, you'll see me use this a lot because I like the rustic vintage look. I love the grunge look. So I didn't do too much grunge on this. I just wanted the burlap pieces to look like chiplap burlap 
shiplap burlap, not burlap, shiplap. <laughs> and um, it's been a long day. I'm doing my voiceover on Easter, you guys. So it's been a long day for me. I got five kiddos. Um, yeah, so I'm just going along the edges. And I'm showing you basically a lot of this so you guys can see what you do with it. But this is in my Amazon shop if you guys are interested in getting um, some of this dark wax for yourself. But they also sell it at Lowe's and Home Depot. And then I go over the top of it a little bit. And then I'm just smudging it with the baby wipe. And I'm just doing a very light, very light with it. I don't want it to be dark. I want it to be white still. I just want it to look a little old. And that's the look I'm going for. Now, see, I went a little heavy there. So I just take my baby wipe and it smudges it in and makes it look all nice. And there we go. Now I'm going to do the same thing just on the edges, like um, on the bottom and the top of the lemons. Because this is going to make them look, you know, even better too uh, when I place them down on the actual round. It just makes them stand out a little bit more instead of just being yellow. And I did it on the hunter green um, leaves as well. And now I'm going to glue them down with that super wood glue from Dollar Tree and then the hot glue. And I'm just going to glue down each one. And see how you could see the shiplap now by using that dark wax? That's why I used it because I wanted them to stick out. I didn't want it to look like it was one piece because it's not supposed to. It's supposed to be like shiplap. So that's why I did that. And just make sure you line them up. And then I'm going to start gluing my leaves onto my lemons. And now if you want a kit with this one too, I can make you a kit. Or you can, um, you can buy it already made. So just let me know if you guys are interested. Because these are really cool kits to make. Um, and super fun. It's super fun to make. I'm having so much fun with my laser machine. I just love it, you guys. It's made such a difference with my crafting. And I'm just excited that I can make this stuff on my own now. Instead of buying it. And it's just really cool. But I want to make these kits for you guys too. And I want to make them affordable. So they are very affordable. And then I just took a scrap piece of yellow uh, scrapbook paper. And put that on the back of my bee. So it would peek through the, where the little black and stripes are. And now I'm going to glue down my lemons and uh, my Hello Spring. And my spring, I did it kind of like wonky looking, I guess you could call it. Um, I didn't do it in perfect straight line. I just think it just makes it look, even look more interesting. So I kind of did one up, one down, sort of like that. And then I put my bee at the end there where the little dotted lines are for his little trail. <laughs> and now I'm going to glue down my little flowers. And I just think this one, I don't know. I like the black and the white. I think it will look really beautiful on a front door. I mean, especially like a white door because of the black background. I think it looks super cool. Any door, really. I mean, you know. But there it is. So the first DIY, I'm going to take this wood round from Michael's that I got purchased. And also, um, I laser cut out a... Um, I laser cut a home sweet home sign. So what we're going to do is I'm going to paint the round with my Burnt Ombre Paint by Apple Barrel. And then I'm going to take the laser cut pieces that I cut out with the Goldenrod um, paint by Folk Art. So I did the little drips from the um, honey and also the actual honeycomb. So now these kits I sell in my Etsy shop. I have an Etsy shop and I sell craft kits that you can purchase and you can make these yourself. So what I did is I did a couple of the little pieces that go inside of the honeycomb. I did those as well. And I also did the body of the um, bee with the goldenrod. And then I did the home sweet home in white. And I did the bees in black, as you can see. So I'm just painting everything. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything together on my board and figure out where I want to place everything. So this is how everything, this is how it basically goes, the kit. So next I'm going to use wood glue and hot glue to put all my pieces down. I already glued down the honeycomb. I didn't show you every single piece putting down. And then I just took a couple of these and I just kind of put them where I wanted them to go just to give it a little more interest. I don't know. I just thought it would be really cute to have some of them sticking in there. 
And then I glued down my words and now I'm gluing in my little pieces to my B. I also made this rag bow, I call them, but all it is is made with fabric. Um, I have it in all my other videos, so you guys can watch those if you want. And then I just put a little button in the center. This was super easy to make. And then I made myself a hanger with some um, wood beads. So this kit will be available um, not until Monday evening. I will be putting these in my shop. So if you would like one, you can message me um, and I can get one ready for you. But there it is. Hope you guys like it. I'm going to be doing another laser cut that I made, which is a honey pot that I made. And um, I'm going to use some scrapbook paper this time and also paints. So we're going to use both. And what I'm going to use first is I'm going to use the goldenrod paint again, that yellow. I just love this color for B. I don't know. It's just so bright and springy and summery. I just love it. So I did the whole teapot in that color. And then I did the base of it in a cream white color. And then I did the little wings white, of course. And then I did the body of the um, bee in black. And then also the teapot spout I did in black. And then the top part of the teapot I did in black. And then the door to the beehive I did in black. Next, I did the leaves in a mossy green color. And then I also did... Um, the flowers in like a really pale you could do them any color you want but I did pale pink pale blue and pale yellow for the flowers and these kind of all fit together then the scrapbook paper you can't tell on camera but it is a honeycomb paper and what I did is I glued that onto each one of these pieces after I traced it out I cut it out and now I'm just mod podging them onto each piece because now these are going to go on top of the backing of the teapot then what I did is I did a little checker. Um, I actually got this checker paper from Hobby Lobby, I believe. And I did the um, handle that with that. And then I did the spout with a, a white, you can't really tell here, but it's like a creamy white paper. And then I went around the edges with my dark wax. Now this I use a lot. If you guys haven't, if you're new here, I use this to distress. I love vintage. I love old looking. So this is the look I'm going for. If you don't like that, you could skip this part altogether. But this is what I like to do. So this is what I used. And I'm just using a stencil brush and I'm rubbing my finger, making it look at old. So that's what I'm doing here. And I did it to every single piece. It also like brings them out a little bit more um, from the backing of the teapot. So I thought it was really cool. So I did the flowers. I basically did every piece. I did it. So, because <laughs> I like it. So then what I did is I took some um, wood glue again and some hot glue. And I'm going to glue each piece down now into place. These are really easy to put together. They're not hard at all. It's really self-explanatory, not too hard to um, figure out. And then I'm just going to glue one to each side. I thought that this honey pot was the cutest thing ever. But you guys got to let me know what you think. But I'm going to have this in my shop as well for you guys to check out. If, in case you want to do one on your own. And now I'm just going to put the little handle on. And I like the black with the yellow and the check. I think it looks really super cool. And now I'm just going to glue, glue down the um, spout as well. And then once that is all glued down, I'll glue down the top part there to the pot. And then I'm gonna do my little bee. So that bee also has a base, which makes it really easy to glue the laser cut piece down on it. And then those little yellow pieces fit right inside the empty spaces there. So then you have your stripes for your bee. Super easy. They just pop right in and just put a little bit of glue in there and they go right in. And then I'm going to glue down um, my little flowers. And they kind of go together like a puzzle piece as well. They just all fit in to each other real nicely. And I just glued all those down. And then I glued down my little leaves. And then also the centers to the um, flowers as well. You just pop those in with a little bit of glue 
and then the leaves. And this one is my favorite, I think. I just thought this was such a cute idea. And then I glued down my little bee. And then next, I'm just gonna glue it down into the base. So I use glue in the base because it doesn't, the, the slit is a little bit bigger and it's meant to be a little bit bigger so that you could put glue in there and so that it stays in there really nice and firm. So there it is, all done. And I think it turned out super cute, you guys. You guys gotta let me know what you think down below in the description box. Now DIY number three. So now this one is another round. And this round I am going to do with the same colors basically I'm gonna be doing. I'm um, use some antique wax, some yellows, and um, some elephant gray, and some steel color. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to pour out my um, antique wax. I'm using a baby wipe and I am wiping it all over my round. This is how I do my rounds. And then I took um, my paper towel and just wiped it <laughs> off. And then what I did is I went and I did the actual honeycomb, which is going to be like tipping out of the pot. These are super cute. I did a, I did an actual lemon one too that you guys could check out. I'll leave that link down below as well. And then I just went over the top with the, um, the maize color by Waverly. And then I went over the little drips of honey with the goldenrod because I wanted two different tones of yellow. I thought it would look much better and I liked it a lot better that way. And then I took the elephant gray color and I did paint my pot those colors. And then I just dabbed on the top with my sponge. And this is a Dollar Tree sponge I'm using. And I'm dabbing the steel paint on top. I want it to look like it's cement, like it's a cement pot. So that's what I was doing there. And then once I got that all on there, then what I did is I just kept going over and over it again until I got it to the, you know, the way I liked it. Then I used the moss color, green moss, and I did the vine with that. And then I did white with the high. And then I did the um, bees in black, of course. And I just use paint markers to um, do the painting of the bees. It was just a lot easier because I wanted to do the white for the wings. So it was just easier to use the paint markers. So if you have acrylic paint markers, you should use them because this is really a lot easier to do. Now I'm gonna start gluing everything together. So what you do is you take the bottom part of the pot, which is this one with the slit in the back, and you glue the other one on top. And then you glue your actual top of your pot on top of that. <laughs> so it's kind of like three pieces that you're gluing together. And then you're gonna take this whole piece here and you're gonna glue it to the back there. It just goes right in that groove. And I used hot glue and wood glue for this as well. And now it's all together. So now all you have to do is glue it onto your round. And then I'm gonna, first I'm gonna glue down the vine. And you're gonna show the vine's gonna be kind of like coming out the other side of the pot. And you just glue it around, you know, going around, cascading down the side of your round there, like so. And some pieces are gonna stick out a little, and that's okay, that's how it's supposed to be. And then you're just gonna glue down the rest of your piece here with the pot and the honeycomb. And then once I get that down, then we're gonna start putting down um, the actual ribbon, which is also white. I painted that also a white color, and that's gonna go on our pot. It's really cute. It's just a little bow string. It's super cute. I just love this one. This is one of my favorite ones um, too. And I loved making the one with the lemons. I actually sold a lot of a lot of those kits. Um, a lot of people wanted those. So if you're interested in a lemon one, let me know. I don't have any in my shop right now. I only make them like if you order them for me. So you can message me there on um, my Etsy shop. You can message me there and let me know that you would like one and I can get one ready for you. 
or you can message me here on YouTube or also on Facebook or on Instagram, <laughs> any one of the, my platforms you can reach me. And then what I'm going to do is I put a little popsicle stick on the back of my bees, just a little piece, just to keep those other pieces so I can glue them down and make it much easier for them to fit inside the bee. And then I glued the whole thing down to the round. And that's it. And I put a little bead um, hanger on it. And there he is. Isn't it cute? I love it, you guys. So let me know what you think down below. So no DIY number four. I did this really cute bear. And I absolutely love this bear. He's a honey bear. He's dressed up like a bee. So what we're going to do is we're just going to paint him. And that's basically it. So what I'm using is burnt ombre. And I'm painting the base of him in the back with that color. I did the little antennas in black. And then this is the little stand that you put together for him to stand up on. And then also I did his little paws brown. I did his head brown and then I did the bottom portion black because it's like his body is a bee so you want it to be the bee colors so you do the bottom portion black and his head in the brown and then I did his nose brown as well I mean black and then I did his feet black as well and he's just super cute I just love him <laughs> he's so cute so then the little um beehive I did with the paint um the um, goldenrod paint and then the inside of the bear bee costume I did that color too and then the buzz off sign I did with linen um, it's folk art paint linen it's kind of like an off-white paint and now we're gonna glue our pieces together so what I did is I'm just gonna glue down my little bear to the base of the bear <laughs> which sounds funny but that's what it is and then our little um, B sections you're going to put inside those yellow ones to make them look like a B. And you just slide those right in. They pop in real nice. And then the nose, of course, goes in the center. And then I did the wings also in that linen color as well. I didn't want them real white. I wanted them a little off-white. And then the inside of his ears I did in that linen color too. And they just pop right inside his ears too. So it comes with a lot of little pieces, but it's super cute. Now I wanted my uh, beehive to stick out a little bit. So I did a little popsicle stick on there and just glued it down like that. But you don't have to do that. That was just a preference that I did, that I wanted. And then I glued down his little feet and then his little sign that says buzz off, <laughs> which is so cute. And then his little paws come hanging over like he's holding the sign. And then these little bees that I had um, in my stash and also this little um, flower comes with it as well, the kit and then the little center. And then these little bees are, I think I got them at the Dollar Tree, but you could also get them at Hobby Lobby. And they're just tiny little enamel bees. And I just stuck them down in those three spots and now I'm gonna glue down his little wings in the back and then I'm just gonna put this stand on him you guys this was so super easy and he turned out super cute I just love the way he turned out now this piece you just want to um, glue the triangle into the slit like so with your hot glue and then glue it to the back of your bear and then he just stands up so it's kind of like a little stand for him, which is super cute. I love the way he turned out. You guys got to let me know what you think. I will have these available in my shop Monday night. So make sure you go check it out if you're interested. Let's get into DIY number one. So the first DIY, I'm going to be using some plaster paint, some burnt ombre, some goldenrod, some um, chalk paste, um, and also these stencils. I'm going to be using this little pot that I cut out of my laser machine that I have. It's a little wood laser cutter I have. And that flower is from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the base of this flower pot with the color Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel. This is just going to be a base. I'm going to do a really fun technique that I learned. I'm going to take this um, spatula knife type 
spatula, I don't know. And I'm going to scrape some of the goldenrod yellow color paint onto the brown, okay, once it's dried. So I'm just, it doesn't matter where you put it, you just put it anywhere, and you're gonna see, you're not gonna really see the yellow, you're only gonna see peaks of it when we're done. So I did it all around, especially like the edges, the center, and I'm just like spreading it on with that palette knife, really nice and smooth. You don't wanna leave it cakey or anything like that. And then I dried that, and now I'm gonna take my wax tea light candle, and I'm going to rub that all over the top of this part now. And then once I rub the candle on there, I'm going to take some plaster paint by Waverly. This is a chalk paint, and I'm going to paint the whole thing with that. And then I'm going to let that completely dry, and then I'm going to take this little scraper, and I'm going to start scraping um, some of that paint off. And what you're going to see is you're going to see some of the brown and some of the yellow come out, and it's going to make this look really rustic old vintage looking which is the look I am totally going for and the candle wax is what helps you achieve that so that's why I put the little bit of yellow on there and you could do any colors of your choice but this works every time and I absolutely love doing this technique then once I scraped some of the paint off, I took my sander and I just sanded um, to make everything a little bit smooth and make it all kind of blend together. Well, like nicer than just seeing those scrape marks. So that's what I did there. And this came out really nice. And I did, you know, do a little bit harder in some spots. And then I took a baby wipe and I just kind of wiped it over because some of that white chalk paint gets into the brown paint. It just looks all blurred and I didn't like that. So I just kind of wiped it with the baby wipe. And then I'm going to take a stencil and some black um, paste and I'm just going to this is a silk screen stencil that I got from Chaka Tour and I'm just going to rub that on and it's all about flowers and I just thought it went really well so it just says fresh flowers and then I'm going to use some dark antiquing wax and I'm going to rub that on the edges of my flower and also around the edges of the actual um, water can here so I really like the way this water can looks. It's so rustic and old looking, and that's how water cans look, you know, like in the, on the farm. So that is the look I was going for. So I just like, um, I like using this dark antique wax. I get it on Amazon. My Amazon shop link will be down below. And I just love using it for stuff like this, so. And then I just kind of went with a real light brush, you know, stencil and went around the whole thing. I also did the center of the flower too just want everything to kind of go together and then what I did is I put took my paintbrush a thin one put a little paint on it some of that yellow paint and I splattered it onto the actual flower and I love the way that looked too so that's what I did there and if you don't like this type of look you could just skip this part altogether and just paint it whatever color you like or however you like this is just a technique that I like doing sometimes and I just think it's super fun so I'm using um, super wood glue to um, glue the flower down and also hot glue. And now I'm going to make one of my raggy bows, I call them. So I'm using a small bow dabra and I just took strips of fabric and ripped them into strips. And now I'm just flipping them back and forth to make little hoops on each side to make it look like a bow. And I just keep using different um, fabrics, you know, that I get from all over Hobby Lobby, Dollar Tree, and I just keep flipping them back and forth, and these colors all coordinate with my actual project, of course, so it matches and kind of goes together. And you just keep doing that, and then I just put a piece of jute twine down the center of it, and then you just pull the string up, and then you just tie it in a knot, and you have a cute little raggy bow. And I think this gives it a nice touch and also like kind of really goes with it instead of like a perfect bow I think these type of bows really go well with this vintage look and rustic look so I just pulled up my jute twine I tie it a knot in the front and then I pull it right out and then I flip it over and I tie another knot on the back and then all I do is cut down my tails how short or how long I want them to be with my project and then I just glue um, the bow down wherever I want it on my project. 
really simple. And then I put a little button in the middle. And there it is, you guys. You guys gotta let me know what you think down below in the comments. So now DIY number two. This DIY, I'm gonna be using a stencil, a bee stencil that I had. Um, also, I'm gonna be using that uh, flower rub-on, um, some more fabric, and some dark wax again, and also some paints. I'm using black, maize color, and also plaster again, or white, I believe I used this time. And I'm going to use this board from the Dollar Tree. So you get these wood boards they have in the Dollar Tree all the time down the crafts aisle. And I just painted it with that color white. And now I'm going to scrape on my uh, rub-on transfer. This transfer I got last year from a stencil stencil. And I love their sun. I love their rub-ons. They're really easy to use. So I use some of that um, pixie spray, and what it does is it helps glue down your stencil so it doesn't move and then I'm going to just use a stencil brush and I'm dabbing on some black chalk paint for my little bee that I wanted to put on here and I taped off the section where the little honeycomb is because I didn't want to get any black paint on that and there's my bee and now I'm going to go in with the maze and I'm going to use the honeycomb now and tape off the, the bee part and I'm going to dab that on through the stencil as well. And the Pixie Spray really does wonders, guys. You could get that on Amazon as well. So check it out. And once I get that done, then I just lift it up. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dirty this up again with that dark antiquing wax. Um, it's just dark wax, but I call it antiquing wax because that's what it looks like to me. But um, I'm using a stencil brush and I'm just doing the edges and I'm just kind of like rubbing it on with my fingers too. You just kind of like smooth it on. Now, if you get too much on your project with this stuff, the good part is, is that you could use a baby wipe and it'll wipe most of it away. Or you could go over it with paint again and that'll get rid of it altogether. So... I mean, it's not that hard to use, and I think it really makes the projects look really cool. So, if, especially if you like the old look. And then I, of course, dirtied it all up, because <laughs> that's what I like. But if you don't like that, you skip this step altogether, guys. You know, it's just what you like. Um, this is just what I like. So then I also went on with um, my little dauber, and I did a little more of the Distress Oxide on there with Vintage Photo, it's called. And then I did a tag. So now my tags, I like those to look old too. So I get these tags over at um, Hobby Lobby. Now you can use scissors to rough up the edges of your tags. I have this little tool that I use. I showed you both. And then I'm just crumbling it up. These um, tags are really durable from Hobby Lobby. And you get a lot of them in a pack. And then I dirty up the edges again with the dark wax, of course. And I just put Be Happy on there. That's what I stamped on. And I'm just using the dark wax and I'm also using the Distress Oxide um, Vintage Photo to dirty up the tag. So now here's another rag bow that I made. And this one, of course, color coordinates with my project. And now I'm just cutting the tails. And I didn't show me making the bow again because you guys already saw it with the first one. And then I'm just gluing it down on my project. And then I'm going to put the tag in the center of the bow with a little bit of glue. And then I'm also gonna put this little button in the center as well. I love using buttons on my projects. And now I'm gonna use these little um, berry picks that I had. Um, they had a little bit of a yellow color to them. I thought that that would go really perfect. And I just glued them to each side of my bow. And there you go, guys. Really easy, fun project. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. So now DIY number three. So this one, I had this wood in my garage that I'm gonna be using. Um, I'm also gonna be using some of that Excelsior. I'm gonna use a tag again, a little round that you see there, another B and another um, button, some plaster paint, and also I'm gonna be using this mesh. So now this mesh I got from Craft Outlet. Now, if you don't have a piece of spare wood like that, you can also use another piece of wood like the one we used in the previous project that you could get from Dollar Tree. So I'm using some cardboard and I'm going to trace out this um, mason jar um, little plaque that I had because it was the perfect size that I got from Dollar Tree. 
and I'm just going to cut that out of the cardboard and I'm going to rip the cardboard because I want to see that um, that coordinating piece underneath. I like that. And we're going to paint it with some of the plaster paint by Waverly. And I'm just going to, I'm, I just use a sponge to paint, you guys. I love using them. I just cut them up from the Dollar Tree and I use them to paint everything. And I just think it looks so much better than using a brush because the brush strokes, I don't like. <laughs> I like it to be smooth. So that's why I like using sponges. So then I went around the edges of the cardboard with the dark wax again because I like everything to look old. And, um, and I'm just rubbing in it with my fingers and I'm going a little darker in some spots. And I just use a stencil brush. This brush is actually from the Dollar Tree. And I just rub it in and make it look old. Then I go around the edges also of the um, wood that I'm using as well. And this is going to be a really cute vase with a really beautiful sunflower coming out of it. My favorite things are sunflowers and bees. I just love that for summertime and spring. I think it's so pretty. And actually, sunflowers could go all the way into fall with some projects. So, like, depending on what you're putting on them and how you're making them. But I really like um, that. I wear a lot of sunflowers on my clothes, actually. Um, so, I really like that. And I love bees, too. So, that is why I decided to do this. And this is all about summer. Um, so I figured this was perfect. So, and I'm also going around, you know, um, in other spots as well. Now I'm just going to put a whole bunch of hot glue on the back of that cardboard and I'm going to glue it down to the um, wood piece. And now I'm going to take this mesh and I am going to just start like looping it back and forth, like up and down, up and down. And this is actually, it's like almost like a cloth mesh. It's really cool. I like it because it doesn't fray a lot. So, um, and it's really a bright golden yellow and that's what I wanted for this because I want it to be a sunflower that's in the vase. So that's what I'm doing. So what I did is I started folding it back and forth like you saw me there. I'm just kind of wrapping it really close together and I'm just gluing it down. So like I get so far and then I use a lot of hot glue and I glue it down and then I cut it off where I didn't need it anymore. And now I'm just going to glue it down on the ends because I want the flower to stay put. I don't want it to open up because then it's just going to stick out and not look like a flower. So then I did a lot more hot glue in the center. I put a whole lot of hot glue guys. And then I decided to come in with my staple gun. When in doubt, use staples and you won't see them in the center because I'm going to be putting this in the center. So that worked out well too. So I took just a whole bunch of Celsius and I just like crumbled it up in my hands and like put it in the center and put some glue down and now I'm just kind of like making sure it stays down and um and then I painted the center that center circle with the brown paint and I'm going to glue that down in the center because that's the center of our flower of course and I just had this piece around um I don't even know it was just a shape I had in my stash actually and then I'm going to take another bow that I put some, um, oh my God, what do you call it? Straw in it. And I put that in there with the bow just to give it a little more interest, kind of tie it all together with that Excelsior. And then I used some boxwood from Walmart and I put that on each side of my bow. And now I'm going to make another um, tag that says bloom. And then I'm going to rough up the edges again and give it that dark wax. And that's my son right there. <laughs> he came to show me something. And then I'm just going to dirty up the tag again because <laughs> that's what I like to do. And I crumbled it up, you know, and everything. Just make it look old. And I'm going to glue that down to the center of my bow. And then I'm going to put a um, button in the center of that. And I get my buttons also on Amazon and they're my Amazon shop. And then I took this little bee that I had and I stuck him down on the bottom. And that's it for that DIY, guys. And all of these are under $5, you guys. So you'd be surprised what you can make with $5. It's pretty amazing. Cool ideas you come up with. And you've really got to rack your brain to do it. So I'm um, going to be using some more paint. 
um, some sunflowers that I got from the Dollar Tree. I have this um, Aunt Sweet Annie, it's called, dried flower, dried, they're like little buds. I mean, I printed this off on my printer and it's on rice paper. And I also had this um, cutting board that I cut out of my laser cutter. And you could get these shapes so from the Dollar Tree too. They have all kinds of cutting boards now, different shapes and sizes. So I'm using some um, water on a thin paintbrush and I'm just going around the image that I did on my rice paper and I'm just going to rip it now. And what the water does is it helps you to be able to rip it so that you can just, you know, make it look like it is actually on the board and it doesn't look like, you know, it's just a square piece of paper on there. So once it was all painted with the plaster paint, then I went in with the Mod Podge and put that down and now I'm just smoothing it out on top of the Mod Podge. And then of course, I'm gonna put some Mod Podge on top as well. That's just to make sure it's gonna stay on there and it's not going to come off. I love this image. I actually got the image off of Pinterest. So you can look up for these on Pinterest guys and print them right off of your printer. So easy and the rice paper, you can get really cheap on Amazon. And then I'm going around the edges with the dark wax again. Because <laughs> you know I'm going to dirty it up, right guys? And I'm going around the edges. Like I said though, if you don't like that look, just skip it all together. Don't worry about it. It's okay. And then I took one of these makeup um, brushes that I have. And I just went around like in a circle motion and like kind of blended in so that the edges of the paper look like it blended into the actual um, cutting board. And then I'm just going to glue another bow on there. And I'm going to put one of these little cute sunflowers in the center. I got these from Dollar Tree years ago and I still have them, guys. And that's it for this DIY. This one was super simple and so inexpensive, guys. Um, I think that one only cost me a couple dollars. And now DIY number five. So this one, I'm going to take some burnt umber, that goldenrod yellow color paint. These you could get from the Dollar Tree. I think I got them last year. A little circle round. Um, and then these dried flowers I've had for a while, and I got them at the Dollar Tree as well. And then this um, piece of wood is actually a shelf um, hanger that you get at the Dollar Tree. So yeah. And I've had that for quite a while too. So I'm not even counting it really because I've had it for so long. So what I did is I painted those all yellow. And now I'm going to do the center piece because we're going to make another sunflower. And I'm just using my um, marker to mark little dots in the center of it for the flower, for the center of it. And then these dry pieces of flowers that I got from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to use one as the stem. And then I'm going to use one of those dry um, leaves. For the leaf on the stem and now I'm just going to take the wooden pieces and I'm going to make a really cute sunflower so I just kind of like space them out where I want them and of course I painted the board I forgot to say that with burnt umber paint by apple barrel and so I'm going to glue down the center first and then I'm going to use wood glue and hot glue and I'm going to glue down each one of these once I know where they are supposed to go and if you don't have these, you can also purchase, they're called biscuits, and they're little wood slices like this that you could get on Amazon and get a whole bunch in a bag. I think like 50, really cheap. So those are in my Amazon shop as well, if you can't find these at the um, Dollar Tree. But they usually do have them at the Dollar Tree. Eventually they get them in their wood pile section. And then I'm taking some Spanish moss and I'm gonna go around the center of my flower. And then I'm just gonna trim you know, so it doesn't look all crazy. So it looks a little more uniformed. And there it is. This one was so simple, you guys. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my Etsy shop. Everything's down in the description box. Have a great day. Bye.